We're about to begin. Good day, everyone. Welcome to the LIHTC 2011 New Features Webinar. At this time, I'll turn the conference over to Mr. Tony Peterson. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you very much, and thank you all for taking the time to join us today. My name is Tony Peterson. I am the Product Manager over LIHTC, and today I'm going to be introducing you to LIHTC 2011 and the new features that are coming out with LIHTC 2011, as well as uh, talking a lot about ANSI 5010 and how LIHTC 2011 will help prepare you for ANSI 5010 compliance. So uh, let's move ahead to the agenda for the call. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about is an overview of ANSI 5010, what it is, and why it's important to you. Uh, we'll then talk about how LIHTC 2011 uh, will adapt for the ANSI 5010 changes, as well as go over other enhancements and uh, modifications that will be coming with LIHTC 2011, and then we'll open it up for a question and answer session. Uh, to kick the, the session off, we'll just talk about what ANSI 5010 is. ANSI 5010 is a change in the electronic claim filing format that must be used by everybody who's submitting uh, electronic claims. Uh, that there's a deadline for that that we'll go over in just a minute. Um, so everybody who's submitting any type of electronic claim, which would be the majority of all providers who utilize LIHTC, will need to at least have an answer or a solution for their ANSI 5010 needs. So do you need a product that is 5010 compliant? Do you need LIHTC 2011, 2011 to, that will uh, allow you to be 5010 compliant and enabled. Right now, there are clearinghouses out there that are telling you that they're going to handle the 5010 format for you by allowing you to submit 4010 claims and then converting those claims over to a 5010 claim uh, format. This is a very similar message to what they said to you during the NPI years and the NPI transition, where they said, we'll take care of you. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, continue submitting claims the way you are, and we'll take care of your NPI. The reality that occurred during those uh, transition years was that uh, as the NPI deadline hit, there was a significant increase in the number of rejections and a significant decrease in the cash flow within many offices. Uh, NPI, in contrast to 5010, was only a four-field change. There was an NPI number for the provider, the referring provider, the practice, and the facility. 5010 is a much bigger change that includes new values and new fields that didn't previously exist in LIHTC. What that means is that uh, there's not a field in there that will hold the data that is needed to generate a 5010 claim properly. The only way that a clearinghouse can take care of that for you is by hard coding onto the claim the certain values that are needed for 5010. When they hard code, they make assumptions. They say all of the claims are going to have this. And uh, when they make those assumptions, that can result in claims that have invalid data, which increases the likelihood that your claims are going to be rejected. It does not mean that every claim will be rejected, and the reality is there will be a number of claims that clearinghouses can transition over for you. However, there is a significant increase in the likelihood that a particular claim or a subset of claims will be uh, uh, rejected. So. Getting on a version of LIHTC that allows you to enter in all the data that's necessary to generate a 5010 claim will help you in making sure that those clearinghouses have the ability to uh, generate all of the data that's necessary uh, in order to produce a valid 5010 claim. An ANSI 5010 compliance, uh, there are specific key dates uh, that you need to be aware of. The first date that we have listed is the release date of LIHTC 2011. LIHTC 2011 released in early March of this year. This is our ANSI 5010 compliant release. The testing period for ANSI 5010 began in January of this year. So a few months after testing began, LIHTC released. We wanted to uh, release so early in the testing cycle to allow you to ensure that the claims that you're sending out as of the requirement date, which is in January 2012, will be as clean as possible. 
uh, you will be able to go through the testing period and ensure that as you submit a claim for different circumstances that you're submitting it in a valid format, that all the proper data is there, and that the carriers are going to accept the claim once it gets to them. That requirement date, like I said, is January of 2012. All claims that are submitted electronically will need to be in ANSI 5010 format. So let's go over real quick now over to the LightTech product and show you some of the changes that will be coming with LightTech 2011, specifically around the 5010 requirements. Um, we're going to be using live software rather than PowerPoint in order to demonstrate this for you. And the, the first point that I'd like to make before we start getting into specific fields is that as we were doing the requirements and building LightTech for 5010, we wanted to make sure that all of the 4010 requirements were also met. So our starting point was looking at what we did within LightTech in order to generate a 4010 claim. As we were doing that, we noticed some deficiencies, and we... Uh, in most circumstances, tried to overcome those deficiencies by adding the necessary fields that were there uh, that were deficient in previous versions of LiTech. So uh, we wanted to, the users to be able to generate a, uh, a 4010 claim or a 5010 claim out of LiTech 2011, and you will have the ability to do that. So as an insurance carrier transitions over from 4010 to 5010, you can switch over that one carrier without having to submit all claims in 5010 format because carriers are going to have different time frames in doing so. So let's start off with the practice information and the things that were changed here. Um, on the practice information screen, there's a couple new fields that have been added. The first one that we'll focus on is the email address. The email address is a practice level email address that would be sent to the insurance carrier for uh, identifying the the email address through which you'd like correspondence with the carrier to go. We believe that correspondence and the communication in the healthcare world is going to move more and more towards the electronics type of communication away from phone calls because it is significantly cheaper to send an email than to place a phone call. So uh, with that in mind, we also believe that insurance carriers are not going to necessarily need to talk to the doctor in the office when communicating with the office, but rather there might be an office manager or similar billing manager type uh, contact that you'd like the, the practice to, or the, the insurance carrier to communicate with. In LIHTC 2010 and earlier, there was no practice level email address. There was only a provider level email address, so you couldn't get that information over to the carriers. So we've added that here within the practice information screen right here. Um, we've also added to practice information a telephone extension. Practice level telephone numbers were being transmitted, uh, and in a lot of circumstances, we uh, there are offices who have different extensions, uh, and there's one in particular that they'd like to send over to the insurance carrier. We added that field so that you can do that. These fields were available in 4010, but not within LIHTC in earlier versions of LIHTC. Uh, let's move over to the provider information screen. What we've done here, and what you'll notice, is we've taken a, a legacy of the old paper claims and the way that LIHTC was built around paper claims and transitioned it to the electronic claim era. And the change that I'm talking about that you'll see on the provider screen is this new middle name field that replaces the middle initial field that was there previously. On the old 1500 forms, there was not enough room for a full first name, last name, middle name uh, included. So it was last name, first name, middle initial, or something similar to that. With an ANSI claim, it does, uh, it does allow you to submit a full middle name for providers, referring providers, patients, etc. Uh, more and more insurance carriers are requiring the claims that are submitted match identically on the name with the names that are on file. If you only have a middle initial and the middle name is fully on file, there is a mismatch there that could lead to a potential rejection. So uh, within the provider screen, the referring provider screen, and the patient guarantor screens, uh, we have transitioned away from middle initial and expanded those out to be a full middle name. These will also convert over middle initials and populate with the middle initials that you have in previous versions of LIHTC. However, you now have the ability to uh, fully spell out what the patient's middle name is. Let's move over to the patient information screen because there's some significant changes that have occurred here. 
The first one that uh, I'll point out, just for reference to what we were just talking about, the patient's middle name has changed as well. The next one that you will see is a suffix. In previous versions of LIHTC, uh, there was not really a good way to handle patients who had a suffix in their name. The suffix being junior, senior, the third, anything like that. What offices very often had to do was come in here and manually type a delimiter followed by junior, senior, whatever the, the suffix was. That manually typed delimiter would throw off the electronic claims generation process for everything that happened after that. It was very difficult to get these claims out and paid for anybody who had a, a, um, a suffix on their last name. So we have gone through and given you a new field for patient suffix so that you can handle those properly and uh, make sure that all of the claims for people who have a junior or a senior in their name will get paid the way that they should. The next change that you'll see on the patient information screen is that the, in ANSI 5010, there is a new valid value for patient's gender or sex. There is male, female, and those were there before. There is also a new value for unknown. Uh, in wanting LIHTC to be able to fully comply with all of the different options that are there for submitting an electronic claim, we have added unknown to the drop-down list for the patient's sex. Um, the next fields that you'll see right underneath the patient's sex field are fields that are directly related to meaningful use. Uh, with LIHTC 2011, we have released LIHTC MD 2011, which is a certified for meaningful use electronic health record. And in order to utilize uh, this properly and meet meaningful use, there are specific demographic fields that must be captured by the office when the patient comes in for a visit. Those fields include a few fields that were not previously in LIHTC. That includes the patient's race, ethnicity, and preferred language. Uh, because the demographics are captured within the practice management system in the LIHTC EHR uh, scenario, we have added those new fields into LIHTC 2011, and they will transition across the, uh, to the electronic health record for LIHTC MD. These fields are pre-populated with drop-downs uh, where there are predefined values that can be entered into any of these fields. These values are uh, values that are determined by the United States Census Bureau, and uh, the list that is there has been completely defined by them, and we are meeting all of the requirements there for meaningful use around capture of that information. All of the changes that I've shown you here will affect the patient, the guarantor, uh, the archive patient, and the default patient screens. So we're not going to show you all of those screens today, uh, but they, all of those changes are in all of those different screens. There are some more changes within the patient information that we need to talk about. Uh, let's move over to the secondary insurance tab, and we'll uh, talk about some of the changes that you see here. The first field that we'd like to talk about is this new field down here, Medicare Secondary Reason, where the field is grayed out right now because Medicare is not selected as my secondary insurance carrier. The purpose of this field is to specify on the claim why Medicare is the secondary carrier. There is a list of valid values and entries that can be entered into this particular screen. What you'll see in parentheses is the value that's going to be submitted on the ANSI claim. And to the right of that, you'll see the English uh, equivalent. So uh, the reason that we did that was because we wanted to, one, make the initial submission of claims easier. So those of you who are submitting claims and you wanted to say that this was workers' compensation and that's why Medicare is secondary, uh, you would be able to select workers' compensation and not have to know that you need to type in a 15. Conversely, if the insurance carrier rejects the claim and says that you need to have a 15 in this field, you don't have to guess, okay, is workers' comp 15 or go look it up somewhere else? You can see it right here. So it will allow you to get your claims paid better on the first time by allowing you to see exactly what you're selecting. And on the back end, it will allow you to uh, better work through your rejections by including the ANSI equivalent that the insurance carrier will be asking for. Okay, the next uh, field that we'll talk about here 
is the insurance group name. This is a field that was available in ANSI 4010, but not in earlier versions of LIHTC. We've begun to see rejections coming from around the country where insurance carriers are saying that a group number is not.